Welcome to Five Stripe Weekly. This week we got a giant sized mailbag segment, plus a new trade rumor and a kit leak. All of that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Stripe Fam. I'm AJ, this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. So guys and gals, we did it a Five Stripe Weekly live last week. How did you like it? Let us know in the comments below. But uh, we have a couple match reviews to get through and we'll do these very quickly because I think we pretty much want to get uh, past these. Yeah, a bit. well, one of them in particular. One of them, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, but, you know, first up is St. Louis FC. That was at Fifth Third Bank Stadium uh, in the U.S. Open Cup. And it was a 2-0 win and it was, uh, by all accounts, I mean, a pretty resolute win. Um, I think so. You know, the debut of Emerson Hindman, the yep. new boy, yep. uh, he did fairly well. Uh, yep. In the second half, he definitely uh, kind of came on stronger, oh, yeah. uh, definitely set up PT's goal. That was a banger. Right. And, I mean, you know, uh, all in all, I think it was a very professional win uh, against the USL side that had been overperforming against some MLS sides. Yeah, they knocked out Chicago. They knocked out Cincinnati, two teams that we struggled with this season, let's be yeah. fair. And, uh, you know, it's a quarterfinal round. You know, we, and our trek into the towards the open U.S. Open Cup continues. Yeah, and indeed. so we are into the semifinal round now. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, totally agreed. Uh, very resolute, slow start. You know, mm -hmm. scoreless at the half, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I thought Emerson. Yes, he. I thought he showed really well, especially on that uh, first goal where he, mm -hmm. you know, he's he's tracking back and then you know following the play, mm -hmm. taking the ball off a defender and slotting it over to Petey. I thought Petey had one of his best games in an, in an LA United mm -hmm. uniform. Even in the first half, he had some looks he could have scored on, and then he did score yeah. really nicely, uh, well mm -hmm. taken goal. And I think I don't think it's an accident that uh, Hyman, you know, debuts and Petey plays well. And I think yeah. that's because Hyman is a more natural ten and a more natural central player. Mm -hmm. And I think there may be value in uh, letting Petey cut in from the right and more more to the point, like. He doesn't have to be a focal point, you know. I think, like, especially in the form he's in at this point, yeah. you know, uh, it, playing the role where he can like take players on and kind of contribute, but help out another yeah. player who is more the focal point. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, I mean, Emerson Hyman, uh, he still is kind of probably still more in between uh, a tweener, kind of a eight and a ten, yeah. uh, box to box, and a uh, you know just. Uh, just the the playmaker, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think he showed definitely like what he loves to do is to uh, yeah, kind of dictate things, kind of play one twos, combine with players, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he showed a little bit of that today or on Wednesday rather, right. uh, not today. And um, and I think he uh, you know I personally want to see more of him. Uh, obviously, he didn't play over the weekend, and I think with good reason because I don't think you wear out your new guy he came immediately. In. I know, but in terms of like start. Him, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. That's not sure. something that you I think yeah. really want to do. Uh, bring in a guy and then just wear him down. Yeah, absolutely. You know? right. But um, yeah, and so uh, against this side, I think we uh, did enough to put the game away. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, I mean it's just uh, you know I think. Against the USL side, it's what you expect and mm -hmm. want to happen, of course. Right. And uh, yeah, and now we get to the semifinal. We find out who our opponent is. It is Orlando City. Ooh, so we finally have something kind of of substance uh, between us, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's kind of been an empty rivalry. Yeah. Bit. I just can't, really, can't really call it a rivalry, right? But uh, it's interesting, though, because uh, this is kind of like Red Bulls Atlanta to a degree. I mean, you know, bit, yeah. Atlanta got uh, got one over Red Bulls in the semifinal of the playoffs. This yeah. is Orlando's chance to kind of make their mark on this quote unquote rivalry. Right. Especially, yeah, we played them, uh, you know, twice within a matter of a couple weeks. Yeah. Essentially, and, and, so. and both of them at uh, at Orlando City, both yeah. of those fixtures. So, you know, if you uh, got a chance to watch the fixture versus NYCFC and also in the quarterfinal round of the Open Cup, I mean, that crowd was into it. There was a whole crazy scene where they ran the length of the stadium yeah. to get behind the goal and all that. Right. Because uh, they went to penalties and they, the uh, NYC FC captain was pretty much like, oh, uh, we don't have to be on that side where the standing uh, <laughs> section is. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, we'll go to the other side. And then they, I think in a very admirable way, they uh, showed out for their team. And, yeah. you know, they definitely, I think, 
shook NYCFC just a little bit. Just a little but, bit. But um, yeah, and so that match will be on August 6th. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's, it's good. It's good that uh, we've gone through. I think uh, it's a trophy that we can win. Uh, and it's also, again, a way for us to get into Champions League, which of mm -hmm. course, uh, you know, whether, however you feel about Champions League, uh, I think getting into Champions League is still, I think, an honor in yeah. its own regard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, and so uh, let's move on from that match yeah, and yeah. get to the unfortunate Seattle Sounders match, which, right. yeah, I mean, I think one, we were outplayed. Uh, two, I mean, we were poor defensively with uh, errors mm -hmm. uh, that led to goals we had. Uh, overall, I mean, not many chances, but when we had some chances, we weren't putting him away, yeah. but Jose Martinez still, uh, you know, finding a way to get us back into the game, and it's just, it's annoying. It, it's a, uh, it's one of these games that just, um, you know, I think there's a factor uh, of a lot of fatigue. Yes. There's a factor of a depleted back line to a, to a respect. Once um, again, having to deal with an early injury in the back line shift, yeah. and in the left back position in particular, where the boy's very particular about who he selects, and we'll yeah. touch on that a little There's bit. There's a reason why, for sure, because I think uh, he wanted Brescia to probably get forward a lot more, yeah. and uh, when you have Michael Parkhurst, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, I think he's still, pretty solid defensively but i think you lack some pace here and there yeah. and not to mention he's not left footed so yeah exactly know. so you have to slow things down uh to get on your your strong foot it's just not ideal it, yeah you know and then it's just uh, I, I mean this match in general i think has uh, reflected symptoms of all season you yeah know, i can't i can't i honestly cannot sit here and say that i felt confident going into yesterday and it just mm -hmm. i didn't know you know what i mean yeah, and yeah. uh you know if you uh we talked about ex expected goals on here a little bit before mm -hmm. But uh, for the season, Atlanta United have 25.9 expected goals for, 25.2 against. I mean, what that tells you is we're bang average right now. Yeah. And uh, these games can go either way. If you if you delve into the, each match, they're pretty much even. Uh, unfortunately, the Seattle match was not even. The expected goals for this hunt was 2.6 to 0.96 for Atlanta. Yeah, you know? yeah. We, we didn't have uh, pretty much really any chances. And the fact that Joseph scored his was like kind yeah. of... It's like, uh, it's the incredible ability of Jose Martinez. That, and I mean, even an error on Seattle's part too. I mean, yeah. he just walked his spot on the corner, PD found him. Yeah. Now, I, one thing I will say, I thought PD was strong in this match. I thought mm -hmm. probably he's our best player overall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's just one of those things where he can't, he and Joseph or whoever else can't do it by themselves. Yeah. You know, or if it's Miram and Joseph or whoever, we're not having enough guys step up in these matches. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially I think away. Away yeah. we have been, pretty bad um we've yeah. been you know below average on the road and seattle they just got their eighth win at home they've been pretty strong at home as well and so you know this is one of those uh, you know i think we need to set up maybe differently if we're going to go on the road like this yeah. but it's also what personnel do you have to even try to go for it uh in this type of match it's there's it's uh I think a lot of folds to this where it's just uh, it's difficult for us to uh, to I mean on a whole mm -hmm. yes there are issues uh, that are glaring but I, I think you kind of a major issue of this is the lack of attack in terms of we don't have Ezekiel Barco we don't yeah. have Tito Vishalba sure. like there's two key cogs there right. uh, and then you know playing together like these guys uh, in terms of Miriam, in terms of PT, in terms of Joseph, I mean, they're still getting acclimated together in terms of Justin Miriam and Joseph Martinez. Sure. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of factors here that just, yeah, I mean, we're uh, not only struggling to create chances, it's yeah. just leaky in the back. Uh, LGP with an error, uh, yeah. Gressel with an error. Um, yeah, these indiv individual errors are our undoing and Know, these teams are good enough to be able to put away the chances. Especially the better teams in the league. Yeah, and especially Robo Rudy as... Oh, uh, yeah, I just, mean, that's ridiculous goal. God, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it should win the goal of the week. I yeah. mean, just because... 
uh, you do the sombrero, and it just you oh, make gosh. Miles Robinson look like just uh, and and Escobar a too scrub great. Yeah. almost. It's yeah. like wow, you know. Um, but you know, I think uh, what everything you just described, I think that's uh, kind of the uh, catalyst for frustration for a lot of fans, yeah. is the style that we're playing. You know, sure. and the whole point of the possession style is to be solid defensively and also to be able to create chances. Yeah. Right now we're right in the smack in the middle of the league at both really i mean yeah. we've allowed multiple game uh multiple goals in each of our last five mls match no e four out of our last five mls matches mm -hmm. you know we're uh, struggling to create chances outside of individual moments that's not the point of the system like the we should be able to create nice team goals and part of that yes yes due yeah, to think, chemistry yeah chemistry and the lack of personnel in missing attack. personnel sure so, but you know it's and a ton of fatigue because of all these matches and uh, we were speaking earlier before this pod. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have uh, a May that's just, you have a ton of games. Yeah. You have June, three games. Yeah. And then you have this July that has the most games of any of these. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just like, yeah. you, you know, you can't get a rhythm, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, and then all of a sudden you're in a rhythm, uh, you know, kind of flat track bully beating up some of the sure. teams that you should. And then you have to go on a break. Like it's just it's I I think these are all factors mm -hmm. slash excuses yeah. slash they should get their shit together. Yes, exactly. But, and, you know, especially like the schedule doesn't get any easier. I mean, beginning yeah. of August, like we mentioned, the uh, the semifinal open cup is August sixth. So right here, yeah. you know, beginning of the month, you have a midweek match, and then you know, who knows? After it's that. still going. It's just yeah, there's still gonna be so many matches. Not to mention the quality of opponents we're facing over these next few weeks. We're gonna get tested. I mean, yeah, I don't. Absolutely. So you know, in terms of uh, positivity and the the outlook for these next few weeks. I don't know, man. I don't yeah, know what to tell you. I know. We'll we'll, uh, we'll all try to grin and bear it together. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so that wraps it up for the Seattle Sounders match, and let let's get into the news. And uh, so into the standings, what do we look like? Oh, uh, now we're fourth in the East. Uh, Red Bulls got one over NYC in that Hudson River Derby. So now they have leapfrogged us. They sit in third. We have 30 points from 20 matches. That's uh, what 1.5 points per game or something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not great, Bob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're on the same matches played with Red Bulls. Uh, you know, still Philadelphia Union have two matches more that they've played, and so yeah. we still have two games in hand. Yes. Uh, and so we still theoretically could. Uh, jump to the top of the league or but, top yeah. of the East rather not league because LAFC still has yeah. a stranglehold on that Yeah, um, and uh, Yeah, so it's still again like we've said in previous weeks it speaks to the mediocrity of the East Yeah, uh, because I think no one can say that they've been playing well in the East Really no. except for Philadelphia because they're I think slightly overperforming a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and I mean, New York has, uh, I think, two fewer games, NYC that is, has two fewer mm -hmm. games than us played, and I think only two points behind, so gotta watch out for them. And I mean, like, it's mm -hmm. a cluster. The, uh, yeah. You know, one of the, oh yeah, I like statistics, and one of the deep dive statistics in terms of uh, where Atlanta is likely to finish between first and fourth, it's about 15% for each of those positions. Yeah. We have no idea where this team, how good this team is, where they're gonna finish. I yeah. mean, you know, we hope we get healthy, yeah. we hope they get it together, uh -huh. but none of that is a guarantee. And right. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, but uh, so anyway, uh, on to some uh, slightly more bad news as well is Breck Shea. He tore his ACL against the Seattle Sounders, and as long as those usually take, I probably think he's probably out for the season or at least probably near the end of the season if yeah. he's lucky enough to be able to get back and so that's terrible news for Breck Shea but get well soon nonetheless consolations um, buddy yeah consolations and it's just it's a it's a shame because yeah all that left back depth and now we are just reeling right now I would I will always argue that he was doing fine you know, like, yeah like he wasn't great but he was uh taking to the position he obviously started against Seattle because the board wanted him in there, wanted him to get forward, and then, you know, yeah. there he goes, he has to leave the game early, and now he's out for the season. So, right. Yeah. Uh, so it's such a shame. But yeah. um, uh, some good news for a former five stripe, Anderson Asiedu, our super draft of 2019, or one of them anyway. Yeah. Uh, he has caught on with the Birmingham Legion of the USL. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was a mystery why he was waived in the first place. Yeah. Um, I think we can speculate a multitude of reasons, but I think my uh, my guess is that the age might be a factor. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, who knows what his real age is? 
we'll probably uh, find out that type of information <laughs> when his career's over. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully he gets the MLS one day. I think that's part of the reason why he left as well. It would have been difficult yeah. for him to break through. So. Indeed, yeah. indeed. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's get into the buy or sell segment. Okay. And first up is that there is a new leak for the Ooh. 2020 away kit for Atlanta United. And it's got white and gold. It's got primarily, it's probably gonna look something like this where it's a lot of white mm -hmm. and then it's got gold trim and lettering and the badge uh, as you see here. And yeah, I mean, uh, you know, so the question is, well, be before all that, um, well, you know, it's also gonna be white uh, shorts and yeah. white socks. Right. And it's going to actually debut in February, 2020. So with that said, do you buy or sell these kits? I'm gonna add this leak. Yeah, uh, the leak. Yeah, I mean it's a pretty reliable leak. I think. Yeah, uh, 40, Forty Headlines has the uh, the leak here, and yeah, yeah. they they're really really uh, reliable, and uh, it's someone that you yeah. If they leak it, it's pretty much true. Right. So. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna buy it. I think that Atlanta has uh, earned our what you call it. I guess the benefit of the doubt in terms of kids, especially with this King Peach. And so I think, uh, yeah, I think the next one is going to look really good. You know, the, with gold, gold is a tricky color. I think that sometimes it can come off as gaudy, but mm -hmm. from these leaks, it looks like a nice, like uh, a, a lighter gold, not as yeah. a, uh, you know, loud of a gold, sure. if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I like it. I yeah. buy it. Okay. Uh, personally, I buy it too. I think the uh, my main sticking point, and also, I mean, I hear some of the the fans that have written on uh, our comment section and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit reminiscent of LAFC and their away kit this season. Uh, I think, you know, if they make it just a little bit more intricate with mm -hmm. uh, just some some little um, little things, uh, you know, that kind of harken to Atlanta, yeah. I will be totally fine with that. No. Uh, yes, it's going to be simple. It's going to be, you know... It's going to be a mostly white kit, of course. Yeah, and I think... Uh, all in all, I mean, it's gonna be look, it's gonna look pretty clean. I think so. I think, so. I, I think uh, I'll I'll be okay with it. Uh, my main thing is that gold. I just hope it doesn't start to fade like the replica in mm. 2017, and you know, just start to turn green or whatnot. Like that. Would, uh, let's let's yeah, Adidas, work that out. Work that <laughs> right. Out. But uh, anyway, next uh, buy or sell is that uh, PT expressed frustration with uh, T. Or was it TYC? Yeah, it was TYC. Mm. Um, and the Argentine media, and had public comments about De Boer, mm -hmm. about uh, you know the system, and just not him not liking the system, but yeah. uh, him saying Frank De Boer is a nice guy, and yeah. that uh, you know he just has to kind of uh, you know get acclimated within uh, Frank De Boer's system. Yeah, and uh, you know Carlos Bocanegra said on Friday uh, of last week that yeah. The issue had been resolved. There sure. weren't any uh, problems between them as of now. Yeah. Buy or sell that there aren't any problems as of right now. <laughs> as of right now. Um, between PT and Fractal Board. Yeah, I, I buy that there's no problems as of right now. What I will say is that this is not nothing. You know, yeah. and I think this, is, uh, this issue is a classic example that we always say that uh, sports is a is a business, you know what I mean. Yeah. Sports is a job for these guys, you yeah. know. Your uh, your your teammates or your coworkers and your managers, your manager, you know. Like I'm yeah. sure some of you have had an issue with managers in the past. I know I have. To me, like this is more of a work issue. I think uh, for me, the communication is key. One of the issues that uh, Petey brought up was that uh, danger uh, to the team after the Montreal match. Yeah, Frank DeBoer's comments on his play after that. And yeah. listen, were they noteworthy comments? Yeah, we made a point about it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, they stand out. But when Petey talked about this to the Argentine media, that was about 10 days after those comments were made. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, if you do have an issue with somebody and what they're saying in the public, go to them and mm -hmm. squash it right away. And so it yeah. just, it seemed like it festered a little bit. And that's the only yeah. thing I don't like about this. I think you, yeah. you squash that stuff early. Yeah, I, I think it also is a little bit difficult. So I. I sell that there isn't any problems uh, between the two uh, because, yeah, it's also that it's, you know, PT Martinez isn't going to go up to Frank DeBoer and, uh, you know, like demand that he apologize or something like that, no. right? It's, it's difficult. No, yeah. Uh, you know, and then there's the other part of it where it's like him talking uh, to Frank DeBoer, like, um, yeah, I mean, they apparently talk every single day, apparently, and so that's cool. Uh, and if they can find an agreeable yeah. uh, way to keep, you know, the best interests 
of Atlanta United at yeah, heart, yeah. then I'm totally cool with it. But I sell that there are any uh, there aren't any problems because yeah, I mean you can see that you know he's. He cuts a very frustrated figure yes. when he's uh, coming off the pitch and whatnot. Absolutely. But uh, he knows that he needs to play better. He has been, I think, performing to a degree, just maybe not to the stats that are very uh, lofty and you know yeah. uh, the expectations are high for him, right? Absolutely. So uh, the price tag is a big, big factor, and uh, you know I think. That's the unfortunate part, I think. For yeah. Him. Well, I mean, yeah. I think PD and DeBoer come into Atlanta in, in a very similar situation, really. High expectations, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, replacing somebody who was uh, beloved by the fan base. Yeah. And so they need each other right now, and I yeah. think they'll work it out. Yeah. Hopefully they do. I hope so as well. And so, uh, next buy or sell is that the Campeones Cup opponent has been uh, found out, and it is Club America. And we will play them August 14th at the Benz. So do you buy or sell the Campionas Cup actually being something that we should uh, really prioritize and play a bunch of very, very, uh, I think, important players in that match? I, I sell it. <laughs> okay. We've already talked about the schedule in August, uh, and this is, yeah, smack in the middle of August. Yeah. I don't think we can play too strong a team. Maybe mm -hmm. you play a couple first-teamers, but it's an exhibition match. It's a yeah. Community Shield type of game. Uh -huh. I mean, it's great that we're playing a big Mexican side. I think yeah. the atmosphere will be great. Uh -huh. Maybe we'll see some uh, foreign eyeballs on Atlanta and that all of that is good, but mm -hmm. to actually take it seriously, yeah. I sell it. Okay. Uh, I, I, what was my question? Uh, I sell that, uh, or I... Taking it seriously. Taking it seriously. Lineup, yeah. yeah. No, I, I buy that we should uh, take it seriously okay. because it's this. Uh, if you look at, you know, the optics of this, like, you don't want to be embarrassed by a Liga MX sure. MX side. You don't, uh, you you want to show out, you want to win the trophy because this is a final, you know? And you want to, uh, you know, show on the world stage, which is what this is, that you can, uh, you know, hang with the best of them, if not beat them. Um, and so I think that, yeah, we need to probably, unfortunately, uh, probably just, yeah, go balls out. And, you know, this, th these next two months, I mean, it's just, it's gonna be just insane how yeah. many fixtures we have. So, yeah. um, you know, I think we we have to try to win this, I think, uh, because it's, it's a trophy, you know, and we sure. have to, you know, we're in the business of winning trophies and filling up the cabinet. Yeah. Like, that's what the, uh, the front office has said, and I'm poor it. So if we can find a way to magically get our depth back, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, uh, last buy or sell item is that John Gallagher uh, playing right back uh, gets the man of the match with Aberdeen FC, the team he's on loan with. Mm -hmm. Do you buy or sell that uh, John Gallagher should have been loaned? Yes, definitely sell it, especially with the frequency with uh, that Escobar gets yellow cards. I, uh, I don't know the last time you've done a design, AJ, but uh, I think your next one should be Esquad, you're doing this to the referee. <laughs> Please don't book me! Yeah, no, sorry, buddy. Uh -huh. You're getting that yellow card, whether you deserved it or not. He didn't deserve it yesterday, but uh, yeah. it doesn't matter because we're missing him on, against Houston. So, yeah, yeah. It's, he's a, a we loaned out a fullback when uh -huh. we're struggling with fullback depth. I got to sell that. Yeah, no, I agree because, uh, you know, he's a guy that uh has been playing right back at only two and i mean by all accounts he was a starter and you know why he was loaned is still a little bit perplexing because yes michael parkers is the only uh other right fullback yeah. in our uh in our team right now and john gallagher was the other guy that could at least spell for a certain match here and there i mean just at least for like you know fatigue reasons you play a john gallagher but especially the fact that he's starting for a Scottish Premier League team. Yeah, I mean, and he got man of the match. I mean, you know, yes, it's a small <laughs> sample size, but yes, I mean, you know, seems like we could have used them very, very much. <laughs> that uh, I think we can definitely use him on Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> oh man, yeah, against Houston Dynamo. But yeah. anyway, that does it for the buy or sell, and it gets us to uh, the transfers or transfer rumors of the week. Mm -hmm. And midfielder Mohamed Adams of the Chicago Fire is uh, apparently on the move towards Atlanta. There's uh, no word on what is going the other way yeah. per Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. And so, uh, yeah, Paul uh, or Mohamed Adams, uh, he's a midfielder. 
He's a guy who's probably more of a kind of destroyer type or holding midfielder. Yeah. Uh, tackler likes to uh, intercept the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, not particularly adept at passing or anything like that. Keeps it simple. Yeah. But uh, he's a guy that, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think already uh, takes up the last kind of two spots, if you will, yeah. on our uh, on our roster in terms of that if we make the move for him. It's a senior roster spot and an international spot because he is an Englishman. So, yeah, I think this would be our maybe final move unless we make some other moves. Yeah, I think at this point, maybe we're depending on the vers versatility of other players, like uh, maybe a Julian Gressel, mm -hmm. uh, maybe how we use Eric Rometty might be different. Who knows? Yeah. You know, so. I, yeah, bringing I, in the, a type of guy like this in the midfield, yeah, is it what we needed probably. Yeah, I think you know I I can buy it to a degree. I, I don't mind uh, extra midfield depth, especially for the type of system that the board wants to play. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I would love to, for Rometty to get a rest a little more often than he does. Yeah. And you know, again, like another, he fits the profile of the type of player that Atlanta yeah. brings in. Um, you yeah. know, twenty two years old, he might have a future the team, might not. Mm -hmm. So it, but. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, some, think, it's a it's, it's a body that can uh, do yeah. do the job, and you know that gets you at least a couple deep uh, for most days, and so that should help at least in midfield because yeah, we cannot run down our players in midfield. No. Sorry, and so um, you know I think that is a good thing, but we still absolutely need fullbacks. <laughs> So uh, I think this was one that was in the works probably sure. before we figured out that oh crap. We're going to be very depleted on Wednesday, so you right. know this wasn't a like in mind because of what just happened. Right. Uh, so Atlanta United two, uh, they pretty much they got on the board, but I mean it was they laid an egg uh, yeah. still, and they lost eight one against the New York Red Bulls two. Right. Uh, it was the youngest side yes, yes. Uh, in their uh, their history. Yeah. So. Yeah. A pro debuts for Brandon. Uh, Claggett and Will Riley, so congratulations to them. But uh, yeah. yeah, I also think it speaks to just how young that roster is. And Red Bulls yeah. too are uh, an established kind of experienced outfit. So yeah. you know they, they play within the system that is just pretty much within their club. Yeah, uh, Atlanta United too. They are suffering from not only having very few players that can actually train together mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of the you know uh, the guys who are part of the first team setup as well, like the Andrew Carlton's, like the, uh, sure. the the like, they train with the first team and they don't train with Eleni I2. Right. Uh, so they have a shortage of players to even train and do things together, get activities, uh, you know, uh, and set up a certain way. There's so much rotation. There's yeah. so much uh, just, um, you know, formation changes. Yeah. It's it's just gnarly what they have to deal with. And I don't envy what Stephen Glass, the the gaffer, has to do at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, I think you see the lack of experience within that a one loss. Yeah. Is it starting to worry people? Absolutely, it should be a worry. But yeah. uh, I think it's it starts with I think getting enough players that they can actually you know be their own squad. Yeah. Which I think is the main problem. Right. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. that does it for LA United 2, and that gets us into the mailbag where you guys send in these questions through IG story. Please continue to do so, and we might answer your question in the future. But first question comes from Jake Siagra. Do you think PT was right, and they need, they need to play a higher press? I think that's what worked for us last year. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, And I think that uh, even if you are a little bit defensive, you need to engage teams higher up the field. Mm -hmm. and I think that's part of the issue here is we're losing field, field, the field position battle. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the two goals, they were lost in our own final, in our own third. And yeah. that's been a theme this season. Yeah. And it's just our, our teams figuring out that, oh, okay, well, I mean, I think teams have sort of figured out already. Right. But, uh, you know, we try to play out of that back. If we get pressed, you know, they can kind of maybe uh, make a mistake and that's what happens and that pretty much was what happened on both goals. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when you try to be stubborn and just kind of push through that, I mean, maybe some of the guys that are in tow, not only with the fatigue and uh, just, you know, the maybe lack of ability because maybe they're not as uh, strong as the ones that are, should be in the, you know, in the team because sure. of the injuries and right. whatnot, right. Uh, rotation, yeah, you you get that issue, and so yeah. it's uh yeah if I, if we are able to press, yeah. um, it's also you know that's high energy. It's sure tough on a lot of uh, you know fixtures within a month. 
It's just yeah, it is. It tough. is. I mean, like Tata, with Tata, especially in the second season last season, uh, you know, there was a uh, in between. You know, we yeah. didn't press as much as we did in the first season. We still pressed yeah. mm-hmm. selectively. It feels like the press is almost totally gone. Yeah, and I think I know, the really. teams uh, <laughs> queue up on the lack of attacking coming from us, right. and then they just they press us. You know, because yeah. I mean, there's there's no reason not to. There's no fear. Yeah, you know? true. So. It's true, it's true. I, so, yeah. you know, uh, I agree that we should play uh, a higher press, but it's just, is it possible at this yeah. point in time? Yeah. Sure. So, next question comes from Kakis27. Why doesn't Ambrose get more playing time? Yeah, I think it's a combination of, I mean, he's been working back from that injury. He yeah. is coming off of a torn ACL, is it, uh, yeah. last season? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, and it takes a, this season as well. So. Right. Yeah. It, it takes a while to work back. I mean, the board's already said that Ambrose is probably not available for the Houston match. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think it's mostly health and match fitness as to why. Because he didn't play, he played a little bit with Atlanta United too, but not that much before he came back. So. Yeah, exactly. And then when he uh, played the other day, it wasn't fantastic, of course. But, you know, he, what do you expect when he just got back and right. was thrown to the fire pretty much against New York? Red Bulls, yeah. Of all teams. So it is, it is tough. Uh, and, you know, to put him under the microscope like that is, uh, yeah, you know. But uh, so, but I agree. Yes, once he's healthy, I mean, he's now pretty much our probably first choice. Yeah. Um, next question comes from Dom Yermian, twenty. Should we buy Assad and a new defender before the window closes? Uh, Assad is not coming to Atlanta United. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, he would cost DP money, mm. and uh, you know we'd have to work out a deal with DC United and. Uh, if they were willing to deal him back to us, that's a whole different story. Right. And uh, yes, we need a new defender. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, like depth wise, <laughs> probably not a starter because again, left back. If you're gonna be able to find someone, mm. yeah, you probably aren't gonna be able to, uh, you know, for the tam that would, you know, that it would cost. Right. Yeah, that's the thing too, because it is injuries are a big part of why we need to address depth, and so mm-hmm. it's tricky bringing someone who. Uh, is able to start, but not necessarily expect to start when the whole team is healthy. It, it, it's a tricky dynamic. I mean, also, I mean, at this point, I don't even know if we can bring in anybody else. So yeah, if if the Mo Adams thing does come true, then that's one senior spot and what's one international spot gone, and so you know that kind of limits the options a little bit yeah. for sure. Yeah. So uh, next question comes from Nijas. I'm done. Ooh. I, I think uh, I the mean, dagger. yeah, that's I'm, I'm sad that uh, you're done and uh, I think you should continue to have faith in this team. I think uh, we're still, uh, you know, a team that has a lot of promise. I think, um, you know, if you're just looking at this season uh, on a whole and you're doing gloom, then OK, uh, then, you know, unfortunately, you're kind of probably a Fairweather fan. and. It is what it is, uh, but I think most of us will try to at least uh, keep supporting and keep rooting for this team because I think, uh, you know, at least for me, like, you know, I, for one, have loved that Atlanta United have been in the city of Atlanta. Yeah. They've brought tremendous things, not only uh, uh, fantastic soccer culture, but, yeah. uh, you know, kind of changing the way soccer is perceived in uh, America yeah. and in MLS, uh, kind of changing the viewpoint of Atlanta as a sports city. Even. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, you know, and not only that, bringing a championship yeah. to Atlanta, mm-hmm. I think uh, the leash should be a little longer. Listen, am I frustrated? Absolutely. Am I pissed at times? Yeah. But I'm definitely not done. You know, yeah. it's, and I'm not even gonna BS you and say you know this season is gonna be fantastic. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm I'm here, man. We're yeah. we're still here. You know, we're still back in the team. Yeah. And, and if you're done, that's 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 what it is, man. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I don't blame you, but you know, yeah. people can get that way. Yeah. So, um, next question comes from Still Man Mullen. What a bigger problem: our formations, lines, or our defense entirely? I think it's the lines. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, I think it's the lines. I mean, I just think that uh, teams, there's not much of a challenge in midfield. You know, this is what we're kind of alluding to with pressing higher. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just think that, uh, yeah, teams get through those first couple waves easily. And then, uh, you know, even like the Seattle match, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, Atlanta's defense was tested early and often. Did they allow a a goal early? No, but like as a result, they had to 
clear. They had to be on the back foot for a bit, and it affected their ability to create chances. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think the formation is an issue. I think we're sitting too deep. I think we're not able to play out. We're not able to counter. We're not able to do much of anything. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty stagnant, and you know the. Um, you know, you're, you're not seeing a lot of pass and moves. You're not uh, from, you know, the whole of the team, rather, anyway. And so, yeah, I think, you know, formation-wise, 4-2-3-1 isn't an issue. Uh, we've been playing that fine. I think it's when you have to pull guys out of the attack or pull guys out from the back line and whatnot, then things get a little bit weaker. And then plus, yeah, finally, we're bringing in some midfield depth, I think, you know, just at times, uh, Nagby and Remedi get overrun because they just don't have the energy to play every single three days. <laughs> you know, it's right. just, it's super tough. And yeah, yeah that back line, it's makeshift at times. Yeah. Um, and then you got just lack of continuity, maybe kind of guys getting out of form as yeah. well. And it's, it can be a long season. And, you know, especially when you have uh, massive breaks within the season, yeah. it can make your form go up and down. Because, sure. you know, you, you if you haven't played for a couple weeks, well, that's what's going to happen. And then it's back to three days a week. Exactly. I mean, three games a week. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, next question comes from Keaton Thomas 61 What do you believe is the reason for a lack of consistent defense recently? And we kind of have uh, yeah. har uh, you know, harped on this already. Yeah, it's that uh, kind of being depleted, the yeah. injuries, the... Uh, the Fatigue, the lack of games. Yeah. All I mean, that. having to make subs early in the first half, this happened multiple times to us now. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think the continuity, I think it's just the. Yeah. Franco Escobar getting yellow cards and then being suspended, LGP yeah. being suspended. Right. Yeah. You, Even Lorenowitz, I mean, he could do a job in the back line, but exactly. he's not available right now. Exactly. And so, yeah, there's a ton of that uh, that we just named above. So, yeah. Uh, next, question, next question comes from GA Living Excess. Are we signing a fullback in the transfer window? By God, I hope we do. Um, <laughs> I just don't know if there's going to be any space because, as we mentioned before, right. one senior roster spot and one international spot left might be taken up by Mo Adams. So, um, yeah, and also, on top of uh, that, we loaned out a fullback. So I, I don't, I don't know if fullback is even a priority for the front office. It absolutely right now. should be. You but, know, uh, maybe they believe in the players yeah. that we have there that are available. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. right now, yeah, we're pretty much. Only two deep at each now because Bell is not back yet. He's right. gotten into activities, but okay, he's good. still not back. Right. And so you have Mikey Ambrose, maybe. You have Parky. You have maybe. Escobar, and you have Parky. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. So uh, next question comes from Jake Siagra again. Do you think Gressel is getting hit from all the minutes, or something bigger is wrong? I think it's a combination because I, I don't think he's been great at any point this season, to be honest. And so, you know, even when he's, uh, he did get a break, I think over the uh, the extended oh, break. June, yeah. yeah, so uh, he did get a bit of a break, came back, looked okay at first, but I don't know. I think uh, the way Martino used him last season, right wing back, and then later on in the midfield, I think he, uh, Tata, did a lot to get the best out of Gressel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you watch the match against Seattle on ESPN, Twelman talked a lot about Gressel. He loves Gressel for some reason. But not, not, well, I mean, Gressel's a good player. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. And he was talked a lot about how he should be on the right instead of in the middle. You know, who knows? I think yeah. it's how DeBoer is using him to a degree, though. Yeah, I think it's how DeBoer is being you, or is using him, and it's the fatigue that he's suffering from as well. as I think he's suffering from probably, I think, an ankle injury as well that mm. uh, he most games he's hobbling off of the, the pitch mm -hmm. um and yeah like with tata martino he was playing right wing back and that's where he was getting the glut of his assists mm -hmm. um and then it's also gressel he's known for his work rate he uh in a press is amazing because he will just continue to run and run and run right uh in a system where you don't really press uh you know your technical ability is relied on a little bit more right. so here and I mean, let's just be honest, his first touch is not the very best on the team. And so that can affect things in terms of form and in terms of uh, confidence. And uh, yeah, I mean, he has been getting on the, the score sheet here and there, but uh, I think on the whole, yeah, I think it's part of that is he's just, uh, yeah, being used differently. Mm -hmm. uh, he's maybe carrying an injury and it's, it's tough when you have to do that, so yeah. yeah. Last question comes from Liam Goldfish. 
I am not really a big fan of Joseph being pulled deeper to receive passes and to distribute. I feel as though it pulls him away from what he does best, scoring. Thoughts? Agreed. I mean, and you know, he's he already has four goals in these past three games, so it seems like nothing will really prevent him from scoring. But yeah, I mean, when he drops deep and receives the ball, there's nobody up top because that's his position. Yeah. And I just think it's interesting because last season, even in the midst of him breaking a record, there were some people that complained that, yes, you know, he just sits on the uh, defender's last yeah. defender's shoulder uh -huh. Uh -huh. and doesn't really help the team that much. But I think now you're seeing why why, he does that. why yeah. and why strikers in general are told to stay in a certain area because yeah. you need a target man. Mm -hmm. You need someone to build off of and build through. And yeah, you're absolutely right. When Joseph drops deep and pulls the strings, it takes him away from scoring opportunities. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, guys aren't making runs, you know, and people like, okay, uh, Frank DeBoer is bringing in a Brandon Vasquez uh, kind of to have someone to play off of Joseph a little bit, which is, I think, uh, good and bad. I mean, yeah. you know, Joseph Martinez doesn't really need a second striker with him uh, usually. Yeah. But, I mean, last season, of course, that was different because it was Mickey or Barco. And, right. and it was a thing where they were setting him up and they were... Uh, you know, making those runs, drawing the attention, and then Joseph Martinez can pop up where he needs to be to score. Yeah. Uh, so it's a different thing this season all, all together. And agreed, yeah. I mean, if he's having to distribute, I mean, yeah, he, he has an immaculate first touch. He, he can dribble with the best of them. Uh, his passing, uh, it's not fantastic at times, but it can, he can find a really, really good ball. Yeah. But it is one of those things where it's not his ultimate strength and so his ultimate strength is being on the end of those goals yeah or those chances rather and i think that's what you really want him to be on and i think again it's part of the system that he's in yes so. absolutely so uh that's the mailbag and thank you guys so much for sending in those questions please continue to do so in the future but uh that gets us to our match preview it's against houston dynamo it's this wednesday it's at mercedes-benz stadium and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, their form has been whoa, insanely bad. Uh, <laughs> I had to double take. I had to make sure he had this correct. Yeah. Five losses in the last six matches. I mean, Houston was on fire at one point. I think they were maybe as high as third in the Western yeah. Conference. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're eighth, just outside of seventh. And yeah, I think that I think that's what they deserve. Really, they're so inconsistent. Yeah, they're pretty much. Uh, they are just terror bad on the road. <laughs> And then at home, they are just one of the best teams ever. Uh, and it's just one of those things, like they're Jekyll and Hyde, much like we are, but we're not quite as extreme. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and for us, you know, we've been kind of very up and down as well, as you know. Right. And, uh, but in terms of those previous matchups, yeah, that 2017 season, we whooped them at home at Bobby Dodd in that really fun game. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a, I believe it was a rain delay. Yeah, it was, yeah. And, and then he scored a hat trick, yeah. and it was just super fun. And then, very unfun, the next year. Yeah. It was uh, the 2018, <laughs> right. uh, just uh, an opener of nightmares. Yeah. Four One to forget. Loss. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, this is our third uh, matchup against them. We'll hopefully just keep returning the uh, the WL, <laughs> right. WL maybe. right? Or maybe just you know start hopefully, streak, hopefully we score four, yeah, yeah, yeah all indeed. That. But yeah. um, yeah, by God, we need to like we haven't scored four uh, goals this season. I think uh, that is a stat. Uh, like that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's, that. Terrible. I know it's terrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get into some some match facts. Uh, and that Houston have lost their last seven away matches, so that bodes well. That bodes well. That seems hard to do. Jeez. Indeed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, right? But uh, yeah. yeah, and then Houston have been losing at both halftime and full time in six of their last seven away matches. So if we can get an early goal, then theoretically we should probably put this away. But yeah, uh, yeah. and so in theory. also uh, in the uh, the last five games for Atlanta United, we have there have been over two and a half goals. Uh, in uh, each of those and so yeah there will be goals in any of these games yeah, yeah we're shipping also, goals teams are uh, shipping goals against us so yeah, yeah and yeah, also in Houston's last four games also more than uh, or at least over two and a half goals in each of those last four games for Houston yeah things yeah you figure there's gonna be goals in this one. yeah I think so so uh, <laughs> yeah you know uh, in terms of players to watch 
for Houston Dynamo. Of course, it's Albert Elise. We are very familiar. Yeah, and so, you know, he he's a guy that I, I think, you know, uh, not only doesn't need a ton of introduction, he's uh, a guy who just uh, could have gone to Europe, stayed with Houston Dynamo. He's got seven goals and six assists, pretty much just leading their attack. Yeah. Um, and you also have Mara Minotas, their striker, Seven goals and three assists. Uh, I mean, yeah, a decent return, yeah. uh, especially when you have two guys that are, uh, you know, getting on the score sheet. I yeah. think, you know, you're spreading it out at least. So. And I see there that at least plays right wing. That's our left side. So exactly. Oh my God, we're gonna get tore up. Uh, hopefully, hopefully yeah. not. Hopefully but. not. Uh, but maybe with the formation change, maybe we can at least quell some of that, or sure. at least kind of double up on them or something. Right. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, also, uh, some of the you know players that are out for Houston, uh, Eric Bird, a midfielder, he's out with a left ankle injury, and Mimo Rodriguez is out with a left hamstring injury, also a guy that uh, was probably a guy that was a danger man for them as well, so at least he's out for the time being. Right. Um, but Atlanta United, we have a... a a lot of people that are out. Lengthy list. So let's Lengthy go through list. the defenders. Sure. Yeah, go Franco ahead, Escobar, suspended. Yeah. Brett Shea, we've already spoken. Commiserations. Yeah. Mikey Ambrose, apparently, according to the boys, is not going to be available for this match. So right. that's uh, two left backs right there. On top of that, we've got Barco, of course, he's working his way back. He should return to end, uh, team training this upcoming week. Mm -hmm. uh, Tito Vijalba, still working his way back. Kevin Kratz, George Bello, those are long term injuries. And so. Yeah, George Bello maybe has already. Uh, Kind of participated in some activities with okay. the team already, so at least he's working his way, and hopefully, yeah, we, God, by God, we need that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get some get to the keys of the game for me. I think uh, it's how will our makeshift back line cope with Houston's attack, yeah. especially like we were just mentioning against our left side, their right side. It's a uh, it's a major thing of contention here because uh, you know if we don't. This could be a route. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's, you know. let's hope not. Though. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And uh, another thing is that can we create enough chances and can we put them away? I mean, it's been a problem all season. Yeah. Um, not only, uh, I think mostly the uh, putting them away part, but the creating chances. I think, you know, of course, in May it was easier against some of the the kind of lesser teams. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we haven't been creating a ton no. lately. And it's we're smack in the middle of the league in terms of creating chances. Yeah. yeah. It just... Uh, but at home, you know, we're always at least more apt to score. Yeah. So... Especially first. Yeah. So, hopefully, this... Uh, you know, these problems and these worries can be quelled for sure. But okay. that gets us to our predicted starting 11. Let's get through the lines together. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so Guzan between the sticks. Of course. I think what's interesting, though, uh, and also, yeah, it was Alec Can was out with the flu. Oh, but okay. you might have seen Bryn Moore uh, kind of be the understudy on some of the uh, the lineup sheets. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, some, some people thought maybe it was for the form or something like that. But it's Can had Can had flu. Yeah. So, uh, and then I think uh, I think we're both in agreement that this is probably going to be a three-man at least center back line. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I personally have Parker's in the middle being flanked by Robinson and LGP. I mm -hmm. think you have your more athletic center backs uh, to the side. And mm -hmm. if you remember last season, Parker's played that middle center back role a mm -hmm. lot. So I think that's uh, in a way you just go back to that because Robinson did also play some right center back as well. I think yep. it's your most natural lineup. Yeah. Well. Uh, so Frank de Boer this season has been playing Robinson as that sweeper in the middle of that center back line. And so I'm gonna go with what Frank de Boer is probably going to do here. And uh, I mean, would I probably play it the same way Mark is? Yes, I would because yeah, you get the, your more athletic guys and you get Parker who's really good on the ball in the middle. But this is the way we're playing uh, our three-man back line. So, yeah. you know, uh, this is what we're gonna go with. I, sure. At least I'm gonna go with. But, right. Uh, and then so, uh, I think we're in agreement who our right wing back is going to be. Right. Julian Gressel. Yeah. He's played that to good effect and hopefully this kind of sparks his season yeah. back again. Hopefully, yeah. Um, and uh, for me, yeah, I think we both agree that Nagby is going to be uh, one of the defensive midfielders. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, or at least a, a midfielder. Midfielder, maybe yeah. Because it depends on the shape, of course. Right. Um, and then, uh, I think we differ 
on who is going to be filling out that left side. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it, definitely. Um, so I have Hyman uh, pairing up with Nagby in the mm -hmm. middle. Uh, we've mentioned before he's kind of that tuner. Yep. And uh, he actually came, Hyman came in for Rometty uh, versus Seattle, which I thought was a very aggressive sub from yeah. before. So, uh, but yeah, Hyman, Nagby might be, uh, I think, the pivot that it's something we see. I think uh, Rometty does a job at left wing back. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Remember the Philadelphia match when we kind of tried to do a diamond. Uh, Rometty kind of spent some time on the left. Yeah, left. where was left wing back optional? Right, so, or by committee, whatever. Yeah, very interesting uh, setup there. It was, yeah, perplexing and right. head scratching. Uh, completely, right. but uh, and Eric Rometty, yeah, that was interesting because he is right-footed, yeah, and so you know uh, because he has been played there, I, yeah, I agree that uh, you know he could be played there right. again. Uh, for me, I think it's Rometty with Nagby in midfield, and I think Gordon Wild makes his debut uh, as a left wing back because he has been, yeah, he's been playing striker, but he has been playing wing back as well earlier in the season anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, I think. It's a midweek match, you know, against a struggling side. It's a perfect time to make a debut, especially when you're really short on options. Mm -hmm. uh, Rometty, of course, has been playing a lot more sure. than Wild, so I understand, you know, why that would make sense. Um, but yeah, and that gets us to, I think, well, your shape is a little bit different, so I'll, you know, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, two wingers up top. I got PD coming in uh, from the right. Mm -hmm. I got Miron coming in from the left, like they've been doing. Yeah. And Joseph up top as your yeah. striker. So a 3-4-3? Three, three. Yeah, yeah, 3-4-3. Mm -hmm. three, three. Uh, that right side, if if they line up like this, that right side would be interesting. I think Wrestle and PD combining. Yeah. You know, they've uh, kind of gotten in each other's way before, but I think if mm -hmm. PD cuts in and Wrestle kind of hugs the wing, that could work. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, I think with this lineup is your most informed guys, PD and Miriam in particular. Yeah. And then Joseph, of course, you know, Joseph always starts and he's been on a hot streak. So hopefully yeah. that continues. Yeah. So yeah, that's okay. my justification. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, it's a three, five, two. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where uh, Hyman, he played on a, a weeknight. He's going to return on a weeknight. And then, uh, you know, he's going to be kind of more of the 10 here. Mm -hmm. And PT and Joseph are going to be the strikers up top, kind of relinquishing the reins of having uh, to play a whole lot of defense for her, uh, you know, PT anyway. Sure. And so uh, that hopefully can, you know, because he ha can just free up and just move forward and uh, try to get the offense going, get the attack going. Yeah. Uh, that should, I think, maybe bode a little bit better, at least on a, a midweek game where, you know, he has been playing a ton of these games. Yes, he's been subbed off earlier, yeah. but yeah, it's still gonna wear on you. So I think um, one thing that's important either way is that PD is close to Joseph. And yeah. Then they have the ability to combine, yes. and you know, you know, which it should have shown to a degree. Right, and, and especially if you have a Hyman right behind them exactly. who loves to combine. Yeah. I think uh, you know he still has to work right a little bit. I think uh, you know I, I like the prospects of him uh, starting that position. Also, Miriam has been. Uh, you know, start, he started a few games already now in a row, and sure. yeah, he probably needs a break here and there. Sure. Uh, so that's my justification there, and I think uh, with this lineup, we can still at least uh, kind of quell some of that wild and uh, you know LGP probably contain at least a little bit, right? And hopefully that is the case. But that gets us to our score prediction for this match. What do you think is going to happen? Goals, goals, goals. I'm thinking it's going to be an exciting one. Yeah. I'm thinking it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. Uh, okay. You know, it's just we have a makeshift lineup, especially in defense. And yeah. I just don't trust this defense right now. So yeah. I think we'll create the chances at home. I got 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Uh, I think it's 2-1. Uh, not quite as many goals, but I think we get the W because Houston are just atrocious on the road. So hopefully that continues and hopefully we can kind of continue that home magic that we can usually get. And uh, I think we still have enough of the goods to make it happen. So yeah. that does it for the match preview. We won't have a match preview, unfortunately, for the DC United match. But, uh, you know, hopefully just, just stay tuned to our social media and we'll have match previews in bits yeah. uh, across the social media. But that gets us to our question of the day. So with how this month is going, how many points do you think we'll get from our final three matches? Now, keep in mind, the final three matches for this month are home to Houston, home to DC, and then that big one away to LAFC. I think as of now, they have about a 95% chance of winning Supporters Shield. How many points do you think we're going to get from these three matches? Let us know. Let us, drop in the comments. Tweet at us. We read everything. 
Yeah, I appreciate that, uh, if you do that, and uh, we look forward to reading all of that. But guys, that's it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, smash that like button, and uh, what is it? And share this video, because it really does help <laughs> it us It does help us. Indeed. But uh, for Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching.